Well, howdy folks, welcome into today's video. Today's one of those days when I go into what I'm seeing out there in the real world. And I spent the last couple days in the economy, as I call it, the real world economy. And I want to kind of let you guys know what I'm seeing in Las Vegas. I spent time in uh, several different parts of a town, Summerlin, Henderson, uh, the Vegas Strip last night. I want to tell you what I'm seeing as a bald man <laughs> in this world. Okay, I think I should mention that. <laughs> Appreciate y'all being here. Smash that like button <laughs> if you enjoy the uh, baldness, or even if you don't, I still need you to smash. Okay, appreciate y'all for being subscribed. But today's where I get into one of those videos. I'm going to tell you what is concerning me, what I'm seeing in the real world economy, and kind of um, my feelings on this and my thoughts, and also maybe share a little perspective here. Okay, so yeah, appreciate y'all joining me as always. Okay, so yesterday. Started out, went to Leona Cafe late in the afternoon. It's a nice cafe in Summerlin, and it was interesting. It's a beautiful day. Weather was phenomenal yesterday, you know, like probably 70 something degrees. And so there's a cafe, almost always busy, especially on the weekends, like it's usually a zoo. And uh, outdoor areas of beautiful, actually there's more seating probably outdoors and indoors. It's a huge cafe. And uh, it wasn't that busy when I went, but I was kind of like, well, you know, it's like maybe four-ish in the afternoon, but it was relatively slow. Then I went ahead and went over to RH right afterward, right? We got our drinks and went over to RH, uh, looking at a couple things. And RH pretty dead for the most part you know that's a four level rh it's you know just massive and it's beautiful and obviously i'm trying to think how many people i actually saw in their customers there were there were two customers actually speaking to like a salesperson and then or whatever they call them at rh i don't know if they're really called sales people they're more like uh helpers i guess you can say right interior designers whatever and then there was Maybe one or two other people looking at stuff while we were there. Probably, I remember specifically seeing two, and we went on all four levels. I remember seeing two other, uh, like, couples type situation. And so overall, I would say, you know, especially for a Saturday afternoon at four or so when we were over there, pretty dead. Very dead. I mean, this is a four-story RH. It's beautiful, right? But, uh, yeah, and I mean, it doesn't come as a surprise as far as that goes, right? RH high-end furniture that business has been in a really bad place for the last year and a half and it looks like it remains in a really bad place in the short term right it's just what it is you know and they changed up some of their furniture styles here recently and i was asking my wife because she hadn't been rh in a while what she thought of some of the designs and, and some of the color choices and whatnot and what she said was you know she wasn't feeling a lot of the, the browns and stuff they're kind of working with right now at rh but that was interesting so that was uh, where things started out there. And then from there, we went over to downtown Summerlin. So that's going to be right over uh, in this area. Okay. So now downtown Summerlin, I went over there because I wanted to go specifically to Foot Locker. As I wanted to look for a specific type of nikes so went over there that mall was i didn't think that busy considering the weather was gorgeous and it was a saturday afternoon i felt like it was actually not tremendously busy i actually got a nice little parking spot on one of these like side spots here and uh yeah went over to foot locker now i will say in regards to foot locker foot locker which is right here i don't know why it says innovate but it's right here. This is Foot Locker. Uh, there it goes. Okay, it's actually like right here. I'll say this, okay. Foot Locker was very busy. And that's actually two two straight weeks I happened to be by that Foot Locker. The previous week, my wife wanted to look at something. This time, I want to look at something. That Foot Locker, very busy overall. One of the few really busy places there. So, you know, that's at least some good news in regards to... Uh, things overall, but I thought the mall was relatively not that busy. Once again, considering it was a Saturday, considering the weather's beautiful, because this is an all like outdoor mall, right? Um, where you walk and it's all outdoor. So I don't know. I thought that was kind of interesting, you know, to say the least. So let me zoom out here and show you kind of where we went next and kind of tell you what happened at the strip. So let's see, we got to zoom out more here. There we go. Yeah, going over the strip now at this point in time. So first off, um, I drove by, I drove through the entire strip. I was just curious. And it was, 
I don't think it was, I couldn't say it was dead, but I also don't think it was that busy. But there was, I was kind of thinking, like, is there any, like, special events going on this weekend? And the only, like, special event really going on was there was a big concert last night, kind of like a festival, like, hard rock concert. I think, like, System of the Down was playing and Slipknot and a few others. But uh, other than that, it was, it was pretty tipped out there. Went to the win and... It was interesting at the win. So now they got the Encore Beach Club open, which is always very uh, popular. We can say this time of year all the way through summer. And people drink too much there. I'll say that. First off, people are just out of control. But uh, so I wanted to sit outside at the Parasol Cafe, which they don't call it that. They call it like the aloe bar or something now at this point in time. But anyways, it's this area right here. Oh, the aft cocktail deck. That's what they call it now. It used to be called the Paracel Cafe or something like that back in the day. But uh, anyways, so as for a seat there, the uh, girl goes, oh, you know, it's probably like a 30-minute wait. So I was like, okay, you know, put our names down. And it was interesting because then we went, got seats at the bar on the inside, which is a beautiful area if you've never been to that part of the wind. And uh, got our drinks, and then maybe 20 minutes later, and, and there was some tables already available, so I don't even know why we had to wait, but whatever. Maybe they had to clean some tablers or something. And they sat us right here, like perfect seats, um, which I was amazed at. We could get that. Now, by this time, it's already probably 5.30, maybe 6 o'clock, right? And uh, this is like like prime seats, like as good as it gets, literally, uh, at this particular place. And so they sat us right there, and I was shocked because I was just like, I was amazed we could get that seat at that particular time. And uh, we sat out there for a couple hours, had drinks and whatnot. And there was other seats, some other seats available at that particular time. So, yeah. And I mean, this couple girls would come here and there, sit down for a bit, kind of look like high end. Uh, can we say escort? Can, is, can you say that on YouTube? You know, once you lived in Vegas long enough, you know how to spot them. Um, and, you know, they would have a little drink and then go off. And then, like, another set of girls would come. High, you know, if you're a high-end escort, you're going to hang out the way in the encore. Okay, that's just, like, the place to hang out. So, because that's where the rich guys are at. So, that's like, if you're looking for something, that's where you're going to find them. And so, uh, Anyways, and so it wasn't that busy overall. I'll say that. SW Steakhouse was busy, but that's always busy. Uh, and on Saturday night, you, you got to be busy. But honestly, I feel like if I wanted a table at SW last night, I think I could have got a table. And that's interesting because, you know, these type of restaurants, Lakeside, SW there, you can't usually get just a seat. Like, you got to have a reservation way in the future, especially on a Saturday night. And so, but I felt like, I felt like I could go any restaurant that night and get a seat. Maybe not right away. Maybe it'd be a 20, 30 minute wait or something like that. But I feel like I could have got a seat. Whereas I feel like a lot of these restaurants for the last many years, it's been, you better have a reservation or you're not getting a seat. And so that was different last night. I, I noticed that it was different. So anyways, we come, we hung out there for a few hours beautiful weather you know they put on some shows and stuff just gorgeous um had a great time and whatnot and then we ended up walking the whole interior of the property and in terms of gaming activity the sports book decent busy nothing crazy and I, I, there's not a ton of sports going on last night there was uh you know some nba games stuff like that so sport book was like eh kind of sleepy for once again a saturday night at the win the tables the regular tables were decent on on win side and on core side they also had pretty high limits on a lot of the tables like i looked at the craps tables on on core side they were starting at 50 50 minimum if you if you know craps like 50 is a lot to start with you you know for that was the like the cheapest table i could find at encore or win uh for craps was 50 50 minimum bet so, you know, if you're back in that, it's like, you know, $150 deep. Like, you, you better be playing with at least a 1000 if not a few thousand dollars, to, to make it worthwhile for playing craps like that. Um, a lot of the blackjack stuff like that, it seemed like it was pretty much 50 and up. So, But the tables were decently busy. I looked at the high limit rooms, which is where the money really matters, just to be honest. That's, that's where it really matters for win. In the, the high limit rooms on the win side were okay but not that busy and the only 
really players I saw in the win high limit room was really Asian players, from what I remember. Didn't really see anybody else other than a few Asian players in the high limit room at win. On course side, uh, tables look decent, but, you know, it's just decent. It's not like this is busy or anything like that. It's just like, it's okay. Uh, looked in the high limit room at Encore. A few people playing. When I say a few, I'm talking maybe five to eight players total. Um, which, keep in mind, those, if you're busy, those rooms probably are, are putting like 20, 30 people in, in, in there. Th- those rooms are never going to be super packed because, you know, these you know, you're usually playing with minimum $500 a hand for whatever you're doing. But a lot of times the, the table minimums are a thousand to 2000, uh, for roulette or anything like that. So we're talking like, it's a lot of money to be playing around with. Right. And so, yeah, on course side, not too super busy poker room, busy, but the poker room is always busy at the win in encore. Well, it's actually on the encore side. It's always busy. So like, doesn't come as a surprise. What about the stores? The stores, because you got all the super high-end stores there, mm, pretty dead for the most part. I noticed the Kenzo store went out in the Wind Mall, and that got put with, uh, I think they call it Feature, or it was like a Feature store. So I noticed that um, also the Soul Cycle went out at the Wind Mall as well. So not a great sign in regards to that. I don't know what they're going to put in that place. So a little, little turnover there, right? And then I'm trying to think. Oh, and then we we ate at um, I think it's called Casa de Playa or whatever the Mexican restaurant there. And you know I didn't have a reservation. Obviously, it was just kind of like last minute. And so I was like, hey, "Can we get a table for two? And she's like, "Yeah, but it might take like 30 minutes." I said, "Okay, you could put me on the the wait list." And then she said, "There might be some seats at the bar." And sure enough, there were several seats at the bar, which I was amazed at because that's a very popular Mexican place at the Win and Encore. So I was amazed that we could get a seat there. And, yeah, we got seats, no problem. The bar was relatively dead. I felt like we had our own personal bartender there who was just like, it was it was not what I expected for a Saturday night. Usually those type of places you're not going to get in or you're, like, thankful if you can find a seat at the bar at these type of places. You're like, geez, man. And that's really how it's been for years. And so to see it like that, it was, it was kind of interesting. Went by Earth Cafe. Earth Cafe looked pretty dead but keep in mind it was late it was late so that is something to keep in mind there right which by the way i've seen subscribers uh, come up to me before at earth cafe which is always cool so that that's what i kind of witnessed there overall so ultimately it seemed like i don't know it's one of those things where it's like you can't say it's you can't say it's dead you can't say like business is down but it's not busy in terms of like what you got used to for the last few years because i've gotten very used to like you can't go to any of those bars lounges restaurants without having reservations and stuff like that it seems like now like i i loved it it was like i could actually go places because i don't know i don't like to plan like that like oh i gotta plan this night week in advance like i just want to go places and be able to get tables and like do stuff and so um it was nice to be able to do that i will say that which it's been a while Since being able to do that, I forgot to run by the planet. I do apologize for that. I would have loved to guys give you guys an update on the planet. I did go to the planet on 420, and it was packed. Busiest I had seen the planet in a long, 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 long time, okay? Now, today, today went ahead, and so first off, I have seen weaker businesses go under in Vegas, I've seen weaker restaurant chains. Like, this is just a general kind of statement before we get into kind of some places I went today. But, yeah, I would definitely say weaker restaurants are going under now at this point in time. They're going under, folks. Uh, I'm trying to find where the heck I was at. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm definitely seeing, and, and this is just a general thing I've seen in Vegas recently. If you're a weaker restaurant chain, like you don't really have that great of food or pricing or, you know, customer service and those sorts of things, a lot of those places are starting to go under, which is different because it seemed like for a while there, you know, you weren't seeing that much turnover. But now seeing a good amount of turnover from these, you know, these weaker restaurants, which is, it's good if you're a bigger restaurant chain because that that alleviates some workers, right? So it's kind of a cleansing. And, you know, whenever 
times get tougher because of inflation or because of an unemployment related recession, it cleanses kind of the economy. If you're not a strong business, you go out. It's the bottom line. If you're not a strong business, you don't make it. And then what emerges from that when things get better or only the strong survive, only the strongest businesses survive, and they come out to the other side and then they end up actually becoming more prosperous than they've ever been at any point in their history. But that is something I'm seeing in general. Now, I went to the Nike store in Henderson and their shopping plaza was was relatively dead. Like Alta didn't even look very busy, which is surprising because Alta is like always busy. Alta didn't look very busy. Nike store was probably the least busy I'd seen it maybe ever, uh, to be quite frank. I don't even, they, and it's crazy because they have to have a police officer. Like it caught me off guard. Um, I, like when it walked inside and there's like a police officer just there, like they're just there to like make sure nobody steals stuff. And I'm just like, that's crazy because that's a lot of payroll because I bet you they have to pay that police officer. I'm guessing $50 an hour is my guess. I a complete guess, but I would bet you if it's an off duty police officer, they're going to probably want more money than maybe they make usually. And so I guess maybe that police officer makes $40 an hour usually maybe $35, $40. And so for him to stand there in the Nike store, I I don't know, this is my guess, $50 an hour. That's a lot of money, right? Uh, Especially if you're not that busy. And it didn't seem that crazy busy, just to be quite frank. It it wasn't. Like I said, it was pretty dead. And then went over to my favorite sushi place to get a little to-go sushi called I Love Sushi. It's a tremendous sushi spot in uh, Vegas, right? And I was amazed because now we're talking, this is a Sunday night, right? This is tonight. And, you know, I could have got a seat in there, no problem. And with no wait time, like, like literally, like we were, we were there at like six o'clock. I was just getting some to-go food and I could have got a seat, no problem. And then right next door to that, it's this coffee roasting place, dark moon coffee roasters or whatever. And, uh, literally the only customer in there. Uh, so that was intriguing. So... Yeah, to see that sushi place, I love sushi, insanely busy, especially on weekends, always insanely busy. So to see it where it was like, and were were there a lot of people getting to go food? No, because I parked right at the front while I was waiting for my sushi to get made, right? And uh, yeah, man, there was like, no, there was like no one like coming in and out. Like I saw one person that was there for like probably 20 minutes. So one person get to go food. And this place is I'm telling you, this place is always insanely busy and especially, especially on the weekends. I think that's like really, really busy. And so it was weird to see it not that busy. Oh, the sushi was tremendous, by the way. Their quality certainly hasn't fallen off there. It was, it was phenomenal. So I don't know. That's kind of like one of those things I look at and I'm like, hmm, is it recessionary? Like, like what? Like, I, like, it was so slow that I had to, like, look up. I was like, maybe there's a Golden Knights game tonight or something like that. Like, the city's attention is on something else. And no, there's not. There's no Golden Knights game tonight. So, I don't know. That, that's something I was looking at, and I was like, hmm, is that a little recessionary? I don't know. You, you can't draw too many conclusions because it's like it's it's a one weekend out, right? No, if you see these type of patterns emerge week after week, weekend after weekend, then that gets more concerning. And a couple weekends ago, I was out in Lake Las Vegas and in the village in Lake Las Vegas, man, it's, it's hard to make it out there. It's not, there's a lot of places that went under recently in Lake Las Vegas. So that's kind of a little disheartening to see. I mean, there's, there's, there's plenty more vacancies than there's actually places in business out there in Lake Las Vegas, which is always sad. Um, so anyways, I don't know. These are just things to kind of like keep an eye on, but At the end of the day, the longer the Fed keeps rates high, the longer people have to deal with an inflationary problem, the longer you could potentially eventually run into a recession, right? And the recession comes because people, enough of the lower middle class gets hit by inflation long enough that it it starts to dent them so severely that they can't spend anymore, really, right? And so there's just not that money to go to the restaurant or go buy the new pair of shoes or to go on vacation in Vegas or, or those sorts of things. And so that's naturally what happens after consumers get hit enough, right? Now, to add insult to injury is if 
if credit lines get maxed out, right? And let's say you can't get the credit if you're not able to spend on credit. So let's say you didn't really have the money right now, but it was like, you know, I want to go spend on a credit card that I don't really have the money, right? So I'm going to go to the restaurant or buy the new pair of shoes or go on vacation or whatever on a credit card. Well, if you've kind of maxed out your limits, then you can't keep spending, right? And if you can't keep spending, then ultimately you can't keep spending (laughs) and businesses get hit, right? And then businesses get hit. And so then they have to, workers don't get as many hours, right? So let's say, let's say you're a Nike store employee and let's say usually you get 40 hours a week, but let's say the Nike store is not as busy. So the manager cuts you down to 30 hours a week. Okay. Now you got 10 less hours. So now some people might say, okay, I got 10 extra hours. I'll go do Uber Eats or I'll go Uber drive or something like that. Right. I'll do some on the side, but most people don't do that. So if, like you have 10 less hours, you're just making much less money. If you have much less money, that's less money to go spend at the restaurant or go buy your own new pair of shoes or go on your own vacation, things like that, right? And then you kind of have this bad domino effect. And that's what I always talk about in regards to recessions. That's really ugly. It's like one domino leads to another domino that just like, it's like all these dominoes keep pushing each other over and falling over. And then eventually, eventually prices come down, things get cheap enough, Fed lightens up, right? Becomes helpful, quantitative easing, all those sorts of things. And eventually you kind of come out of that and then things start to grow again. And then you kind of get the reverse dominoes to start where everything starts getting better and better and better slowly, but surely uh, versus things get slowly worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. Right? So whose numbers really troubled me this week? It was somebody's numbers really troubled me this week. Well, there's a lot of companies' numbers really troubled me this week, just to be honest. Southwest Airlines. And then you, you're seeing some of these job cut numbers, you know, like companies announcing job cuts, job cuts, job. Eventually, you're like, dang, like this might actually start hitting, right? Like, like this might actually start negatively affecting things if, you know, enough jobs are lost and then people can't go get better jobs. Or let's say you can't go get another job, right? So let's say, let's say like Whirlpool just announced they cut in like a a thousand employees. I think they were talking about something like $400 million in savings, which if you run the math on that, what is that an average of like $400,000 an employee or something like that? Like that's a big expense. But let's say you worked at Whirlpool and let's say you made $150,000 a year. Okay. And so boom, you lost your job. But then let's say you, you are able to go find another job. Okay. Awesome. But let's say now that job, instead of $150,000, like you were making a Whirlpool, now you got another job and you're making 120. Okay, it's $30,000 less. Now you might still be able to pay your mortgage and your car bill and those sorts of things, but you're making significantly less money that you can go spend in the economy, right? That you can go to the restaurants and do these and, and this and that. And so, I don't know, these are all factors to kind of keep in mind there. And it's just, it's, this is what I talk about in terms of inflation and the Fed. The longer they stay elevated, the longer we have an inflation problem, the more stress it can eventually put on the system, which is just kind of like a slow, like a, like an anaconda snake. You know, you picture an anaconda snake just kind of like crushing its prey, like slow, more and more and more. It's kind of what you're dealing with when you got the Fed raising rates so much that makes the cost of lending go up so substantially. Yields go up massively, which is not good. It's just not good for the economy, right? It's bottom line, like eventually that hurts. And then you still have inflation that's elevated. So the consumer is getting hit by, oh, my credit card's out of control in terms of the fees. Uh, I mean, they're already out of control. Now it's just a whole other level. If you want to get an auto loan or a mortgage or anything like that, it's it's ridiculous. Like you're paying like almost two two x the down payment on a third, or not a down payment, almost two x the the actual mortgage each month with these interest rates where they're at versus the interest rates that we had, let's say, you know, three, four years ago. And so that's like insane to think about. Right. And so anyways, we'll, we'll see how this, this shakes out, but it's, it's worth paying attention to. I still have some hedges on my portfolios. I might hedge up a little bit more this week because I don't know what's, what's, what's going on there, but I don't love what I see. And until this inflation dragon is killed and until the fed lightens up, it is a little bit of an uneasy feeling, right? Now, in terms of my investments, I keep all my investments invested. 
at the end of the day, recessions, I need to be in the type of companies that I'm confident in, in recessions, depressions, <laughs> um, inflation, no inflation, good economies, bad economies, great economies, so-so economies. I need to be, if, if I have to feel like I have to sell based upon like, ooh, I don't know, maybe this recession's coming, maybe it's not, I'm probably not in the right companies. I've got to feel comfortable. Um, and so I never make decisions like that, right? It's it's always just, you know, holding for the long term there, but sometimes I might hedge up a little bit more. And so... Just, you know, things to factor in, okay? Hope everybody enjoyed today's video. 1000xstocks.com, my new service. We are at uh, 320, I think it's uh, people on the wait list now. If you want to join the wait list, you can go to that. Other than that, folks, you want to follow me on Instagram. You want to follow me on X, otherwise known as Tweeter, if you use either Instagram or X. I'll put those as a pinned comment here today, okay? Much love and have a great day. Peace.